Knowing integration also allows us to bring up the topic of differential equations. Don't get scared. A differential equation is an equation with a derivative in it. That's all it is. So the easiest differential equations look like this. dy dx equal 3x squared minus 1. This is a pretty basic differential equation. Where's the derivative? Guess what? It's right there. Um, to solve differential equations, we're going to use a technique known as step one, separate the variables. And step two is going to be integrate. Um, and so this technique is so known as separate and integrate. It's pretty basic. Here's how it works. Step one, separate. I have dy dx equals 3x squared minus 1. Uh, let's rewrite that using some color so we can see where the variables are. I have dy dx equals 3x squared minus 1. Hmm, that's an x, and that's an x. Clearly, the variables are not separated because x and y are next to each other, and that's not good. So what I need to do is I need to move this dx over. I'm going to do that using multiplication. Be careful. Please put things in parentheses so you don't get messed up. Um, so we're going to end up with this. Ta-da! The variables are now separated because everything with a y is on one side, everything with an x and a dx is on the other side. Great. Step one, done. Step two is integrate. Pretty easy. Da-da-da, da-da-da-da. When I do this, here's what's going to end up. Um, the integral of dy is just y. Y because. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, no, uh, because when I take the derivative of y, I get y. Or dy, rather. So I get y. Hey, don't forget your c. And we're going to call it c1 because we're going to get a different constant on the other side. Then I have equals. Uh, guess what? Use that uh, power rule. Uh, 3x squared is going to be 3x cubed over 3, because like x, the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, but those 3's will cancel, so I'm going to end up writing it as, oops, one more, just x cubed. Uh, and then I have a minus, and the minus 1, the integral of minus 1, I throw the x back, and so I'm going to have x cubed minus x, and there's going to be a plus a different c. Well, I'm almost done. Uh, to solve a differential equation, the goal is to get y by itself. I'm almost done. I just have to subtract c1. So my final equation is y equals uh, y equals x cubed minus x. Now, with the c's, c2 is a constant. When I subtract c1, c1 is a different constant, I get a new constant, which we're going to call basically c3. Uh, P.O. <laughs> no, fine. Um, but essentially, when I deal with constants, any constant of integration essentially acts as a black hole for other constants. It just sucks them up and becomes a new constant, because really we're just adding and subtracting numbers without variables. And so when I end up with my solution is basically y equals x cubed minus x plus a just d the generic C, because C3 is just a new constant, so we're going to call it that. Hey, this is my solution to the original, there it is, differential equation. Let's verify that, because that is a skill that we need to know how to do. To verify the differential equation, all I have to do is take the derivative of the answer that I just got. I'm going to take the derivative of y, um, which was x cubed minus x plus c. Uh, when I take this derivative, great, I'm going to bring the 3 down in front, x squared. Uh, the negative x goes to minus 1, the plus c goes away, and so I get d blank d, or d of this dx equals 3x squared minus 1. But remember that all this was y, and so I end up with the expression dy dx equals 3x squared minus 1, which was da 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 the equation that I started with. So that's how you verify a differential equation. You just stick it back in the original equation and see that you get the same answer. A little bit more about this. The solution that we got is called the general solution. 
general solution. Um, and the reason it's called the general solution is because it has this plus C at the end. Um, this solution is dependent on um, what's called an initial condition in order to actually get a function. So when you when you solve differential equations, you are you're either going to solve for a general solution and your answer will have plus C, or or you will be given an, an initial condition. Let's say that we have the initial condition that um, this graph passes through the point 2 comma 4. Well, now I know what x and y are equal to. Ah, that's nice. So this is x and y, and so I'm going to plug these into my formula because that's going to allow me to solve for c. Okay, so this is part of the not general solution. Um, so what I do is I just plug stuff in. So y is 4, so I have 4 equals x is 2. 2 cubed is 8 minus 2 plus c. Uh, 4 minus 2 is 6, and if I subtract the 6, I get c equals negative 2. Very nice. So now I can plug this back into my general solution and get this. y equals x cubed minus x uh, minus 2. And this is no longer my general solution. This is called a particular solution. And you need to be very particular about this. Um, the particular solution is what you get when you have an initial condition. So if you have an initial condition and you end up solving for a value of c, you end up with what's called the particular solution. So if a problem asks you for the particular solution, you need to find an initial condition somewhere in the problem.